<clears throat> Put me on a string and I, I do anything. I'm your puppet. Ooh, I'm your puppet. Okay. This is the um, good morning, family. How y'all doing? I'm going to have to let a little time pass, as you well know. Uh, but uh, it's the second day of the Billy Ray Turner case. And, of course, a lot of us know who Billy Ray Turner is. He worked with Cheryl Wright in... Um, in a in, in actually the the uh, ex, expiration of Lorenzen Wright, which was a travesty in itself. Uh, that case I've been trying to follow and get the updates. You know, Memphis is just so wild, and uh, actually. The state's key witness took the stand today, yesterday, which was the 17th, actually. So that was the second day of the trial. And so what I got uh, from the article uh, by Robert, I mean, Kelly Roberts and Kelly Cook was that The man who confessed to helping plan the murder of basketball star Lorenzen Wright is now testifying against the man he said did it with him. Jimmy Martin, and let me remind y'all, uh, Jimmy Martin is a cousin of Shara Wright, right? Okay, so Jimmy Martin took the stand on Thursday and uh, in the trial of Billy Ray Turner. Of all... The witnesses called so far. Martin is the only witness with testimony that claims to place Turner in the middle of the plot to kill my brother Lorenzo. During the court, Chief Prosecutor Paul uh, Hagerman and Martin acknowledged that Martin signed a memorandum of understanding that protected Martin from having anything he said in court if he told the truth be used against him. So that was his plea deal, right? So in 2012, Martin spoke to investigators about Wright's murder, where he told them where the murder weapon was. He was the one that told them. On the stand, Martin said in May 2010, Lorenzen Wright's ex-wife, Shara, asked him to help her kill Lorenzen. He said there were two meetings at Shara's house about it. He said that Billy Ray Turner, the, the man that's on trial, was at both of those meetings. Um, <laughs> Martin told the jury, even after two conversations about the logistics of the murder, he thought the plan was crazy and didn't really want to do it. He felt Turner was feeling the same way and don't know why he agreed to it. But Martin testified, no one said that out loud. Nobody said that. So Shara is talking about this business she shouldn't be involved in, killing Lorenzen. Is Billy Turner there? Hagerman asked Martin on the stand. Obviously you're there, and you're describing it as brainstorming. I mean, yes, sir, Martin said. And obviously you're there, and you're describing it as brainstorming. Right. Brainstorming, like coming up with uh, ways to perform the act. That's what they were doing. And this act, Hagerman said, the act of killing Lorenzo. Martin says one of the plans was to kill Lorenzo and his condo in Atlanta. Martin says he and Turner drove from Memphis to Atlanta in June of 2010. Mm -mm -mm. Climb through a window hoping to run into Lorenzo. Basically, catch Lorenzo in a compromising position 
and take care of him, Martin said. Martin said he was relieved they never ran into Wright. But that the conversations about how to successfully pull off the murder continued via Facebook instant messenger with the accused mastermind of this plot, Shara Wright. The two used cold words with hopes that it wouldn't be traced. The conversation was disguised as if they were having a party. Uh, MPD forensic analysis found a message from June 24, 2010, in which Shara wrote, uh, about your beats, any luck on getting all the new equipment? I'm still asking people who I think you could get deals from. Right there, he said, we're talking about gun. Mm -mm -mm. Talking about guns. Chief Prosecutor Hagerman asked, what was the reason for new guns? Because the guns that she supplied was small, 25, 38, and one of them was way too large, Martin said. There was this message on July 7, just 12 days, 12 days before they killed Lorenzo. Martin wrote, you want me to go to the party? Adult theme, but the party has kids. When is it going to be an adult party? Or how to plan around that? Martin explained that the kids was really a call for witnesses. The prosecution had not finished their questioning of Martin, so that will resume when the trial starts back up again this morning. When cross, then that's when the cross examination of the defense uh, will begin. Before the court adjourned on Thursday, the prosecution had yet to ask about the night Wright was killed. Those details are expected today as well. I mean, and this dude, I mean, how could he, how could he want to do that? It's still hard for me to believe that they even did that craziness. I mean, it's just so insane. But here's a little clip. Um, whew. Anyway, here's a little clip from... Um, a man who confessed to helping plan the murder of basketball star Lorenzen Reich now testifying against the man that he said did it with him. Jimmy Martin took the stand today in the trial of Billy Ray Turner. Action News 5's Kelly Roberts was in the courtroom. Kelly, what is Martin saying? Good evening, Kanji. Well, Martin is saying that in May of 2010, Lorenzen Wright's ex-wife, Shara Wright, employed him to kill Right. He says there were two meetings at Shara's house involving logistics of this murder. He says Billy Ray Turner, the man now on trial for that murder, was at both of them. So Jimmy Martin, Shara's cousin, uh, took the stand late this afternoon for the prosecution. In 2012, Martin told investigators about Wright's murder, and he also told them where the murder weapon was, which was later discovered there. Today, Martin told the jury, even after two conversations about logistics of the murder, he thought the plan was crazy and didn't want to do it. He said he felt Turner was feeling the same way, but Martin testified no one said that out loud. When Shara's talking about this business, she shouldn't be in. Killing Lorenzo. Is Billy Turner there? Yes, sir. Obviously, you're there. Is this pregnant lady there? Yes, sir. And you describe it as what? Brainstorming? Like brainstorming. They come to ways of how to miss, you know, perform the act. Okay, and what act are we talking about? The murder of the victim. All right. And you say. They were coming up with ways we were. So Martin testified Ooh. he and Turner actually drove to Atlanta one time to kill Wright on the request of Shara, but he was not home at his condominium in Atlanta. So Martin said the two 
drove back to Memphis. And now the prosecution has not finished their questioning of uh, Martin before court court adjourned for today so that it's expected that the questioning will continue tomorrow morning when court resumes. And then, of course, cross-examination will take place if the defense chooses. Now, something that has not been asked of Martin on the stand quite yet, the details of the night of Lorenz and Wright's murder. Of course, he was murdered in July of 2010 here in Memphis. So expect to hear those details tomorrow as well. We will be streaming this as uh, the court gets back into session tomorrow morning around 930. Reporting live from 201 Poplar, Kelly Roberts, Action News 5. Hi, I'm Dr. Catherine Smith, you know, and this is um, Smith Meadows. Um, I'm going to keep y'all updated on this uh, trial. Um, and, you know, the, the, the more I think and the more I really take myself back to that time, I know that Shara suffered some abuse at the hands of Lorenzo. I also know that it was one of those relationships that is so volatile that if you don't get away from it, somebody is going to hurt the other one. And they didn't have enough um, uh, therapy to know that. You know what I'm saying? They didn't have enough resources, enough uh, healthy people in their ears to be like, uh, uh, you need to, y'all, y'all need to, y'all need to break this off. It's going too far. And sometimes when you start doing things and having sex like that too early, like I believe both of them were victims of that. Cheryl is a few years older than Lorenzen and took, use her feminine wiles to finesse that young man. And um, it turned out really, really bad. Really, really bad. But in our community, here's what I say. Ain't no politician going to save us. Ain't no politician going to save us. Whether it's Joe Biden, Sleepy Joe, or I don't even call him Jim. I call him Senile Joe. Or if it's mentally ill, Donald Trump. And the fact that I'm even saying both of these names and, and black people actually thinking that that can be a savior is, you know, I know I'm going off the deep end a little bit right here, but this is the kind of killing we like to do. We like to kill ourselves. This is the madness we do. And then you want to know why I say that we're cowards and we can't expect for no politicians to get us up out of this. This is the kind of stuff that got to be corrected in-house. Now, this woman got all these kids by this man and so mentally ill that never thought past the situation that you're about to kill these kids' daddy? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. And there's too many issues and people out here that's running around with this same crazy ass mentality. And I'm telling you, if we don't stop coming and dealing with this part of us, talking about some damn Democrat Republican, both of them the same damn wings on the uh, different wings, left and right on the same corrupt bird. Okay. Now, at one point, I did believe that black people could get a little bit more done with the Democratic Party, but that should have been stopped a long time ago once you, we saw that they took our vote for granted. Okay? But none of that has to do with this type of shit right here. Us killing ourselves. Us killing ourselves. Here's a woman that made sure, I mean, that set up emotion. A plan to have the father of her seven kids murdered? Those kids are traumatized for the rest of their life. And they're young adults now. Ugh, I feel so bad for them. Not Shara. I feel so bad for her babies. 
Because that's something they can't, they can't ever live down. They love both of them so much. And to put them in that situation. I pray for them kids, y'all. Because I'm going to tell you, we got so much madness going on in our community. Man, somebody got to talk about it. And somebody got to address it. Because that's why we ain't going to get nowhere until we start dealing with this kind of mental illness. So with that being said, if you like what you hear, subscribe to the channel, like the channel, and pray for those uh, right children. Pray for them, that they don't end up being predators, male or female.